the development complexity of modern day application is high because today when an application is developed performance and responsiveness are considered as very critical aspects so if you think logically you can comprehend that running the entire process at once is not going to help in improving these above matrix so how is that achieved well this is where the concept of threads come into play threads are basically small lightweight chunks of process or program that are independently executed in the context of execution when multiple threads are run simultaneously the process is considered as multi threading it's one of the favorite concepts of interviewers to direct questions at the freshers so if you want to learn what it is and how it works this video is all you need welcome to the intellipaths video tutorial on multi threading in java in this short video we will learn what multi threading is and how you can implement it with java environment but before we begin with the exploration ensure that you have subscribed to our intellipath youtube channel on that note let's dive directly into the topic so let's start with what is multi threading multi threading is basically the concept of concurrent execution of multiple threads in a single java process a thread you can consider it as a lightweight independent unit of a program that runs concurrently with the other threads allowing for parallelism and increase efficiency in executing tasks java provides built in support for multi threading through its thread class and related apis thus making it easy to implement multi threaded applications this was just a generalized idea what exactly is multi threading now let's move forward and discuss the benefits of using multi threading multi threading offers several advantages in java application the first one is improved performance multi threading allows for parallelism thus enabling task to be executed concurrently which results in faster execution times and improved performance then we have enhanced responsiveness multi threading can help ensure that a java application remains responsive to user interactions even performing time consuming tasks by delegating those tasks to separate threads third is the resource utilization if i talk about resource utilization multi threading can efficiently utilize system resources such as cpu cores by enabling the concurrent execution of tasks thus resulting in optimal resource utilization fourth one is scalability multi threading can facilitate the scalability of java application as tasks can be parallelized to take advantage of multiple cpu cores thus enabling the application to handle the higher loads i hope so you would have got a brief idea what are the benefits of using multi threading now we will also go through and understand some of the challenges related to multi threading while multi threading offers many benefits it also comes up with challenges including first one is thread safety as thread runs concurrently and share resources such as variable or data structures thread safety becomes a concern care must be taken to synchronize access to shared resources to prevent race conditions deadlocks and other concurrency related issues the second one is debugging and complexity debugging multi threaded code can be challenging as threads may execute independently and concurrently thus making it difficult to trace and identify issues and the third one is coordination and synchronization if i talk about coordination and synchronization coordinating threads and synchronizing their execution can be little bit complex as threads may need to communicate and wait for each other to complete certain task these were some of the challenges of using multi threading now we will move forward and understand one of the most important concept that is java's thread class let me tell you about what is a java thread class java provides a inbuilt thread class that represents a thread of execution it is a part of java standard library and provides methods and apis for creating and starting stopping and managing threads in java application now let me show you one of the example of java thread class so consider this program in which i have created my class called my thread which is basically extending the thread class and i have created a run method in which i am printing the thread is running then i have created the main method and which i am creating my thread object and i am calling the method call start 
then I'm printing that main thread is running. Now basically, let me give you a brief overview. In the example of up, we create a custom thread by extending the thread class and overriding its run method with the code that we want to execute in our thread. Then create an instance of our custom thread and start it using the start method and concurrently run the code in the main thread. So this was basically one of the example in which I have created our thread class. If I start to run this, so you're gonna get that my thread is running and thread is also running. So I hope so, this example would be pretty clear to you. Now let's move forward and understand the thread synchronization. If I talk about thread synchronization, it is an important aspect of multi-threading in Java to prevent basically the race conditions and ensure that thread access shared resources in a coordinated and safe manner. Here's an example which I want to show you demonstrating the thread synchronization. So let's see this example. In this, I have created two class. The first class is counter.java and second class is mythread.java. In counter.java, I have declared our class as counter and I have declared a variable with the access modifier private with int count equals to zero. Then I have created a synchronized method to increment the counter, which is basically public synchronized void increment and then I have added count plus plus. Then we want to get the counter value in which I have used public int get count and I am returning the count basically. Now in my thread.java class, you can see that class my thread is implementing the runnable interface. Then I'm declaring a variable private counter counter. Then I'm creating this constructor public my thread and I'm passing this parameter counter counter where I am binding this with this dot counter equals to counter. Then I have creating the method called run in which for int i equals to zero, i less than 10,000, i plus plus, then counter dot increment. Then you can see in the main method that I have created three new multiple threads. Okay, then I'm starting all this thread with thread one dot start, thread two dot start and thread d dot start. Then I'm waiting for these threads to complete. Then calling this under try and catch block that thread one to join, thread two to join, thread three to join. Then I'm catching the interrupted exception E and I'm calling E dot print stack trace. And basically I'm printing our counter value plus counter dot get count. Let's see and run the program. So as you can see, when we run our output, we get thread one count one, thread one count two. Moving ahead, we get thread one count three, thread one count four and thread one count five. Since we have used our for loop till five, we are getting count for thread one till five. Similarly goes for next, count 6 for 2, count 7 for 2, count 8 till count 10. This was our output for this program. So let me give you a brief overview of this program once again. So by using the synchronized keyword, we ensure that only one thread can access the increment method at a time, thus preventing the race condition and ensuring that counter is incremented correctly. This is a common approach basically to achieve thread synchronization in Java multithreading. However, it's also important to note that improper use of synchronization can lead to performance issues or even deadlocks. So it's important to carefully design and test multi-threaded code. Additionally, Java provides other synchronization constructs such as lock and condition for more advanced synchronization scenario. Overall understanding and implementing proper thread synchronization techniques is crucial in writing robust and reliable multi-threaded Java application. Note that this is just a basic example and the actual implementation of thread synchronization may vary depending on the specific use case and the requirement of the application. It is also important to thoroughly understand the principles of thread synchronization and carefully design and test the multi-threaded code to ensure its correctness and efficiency. I hope so you would have got the idea of thread synchronization. Now let's move forward and understand the thread communication. As you can see in this program of thread communication, I've imported two classes, which is java.lang.thread and java.lang.runnable. Then I'm declaring the runnable interface and I'm declaring this variable, which is private, which is boolean flag equals to false. Then I'm using the public synchronized keyword and with the method called run. In the try and catch block, I am putting this condition while not equal to flag 
system.out.println thread is waiting. Then I am calling the wait method. And the catch exception, I am calling interrupted execution e. And I am printing e.printStackTrace if any error shows up. Okay. Then I am system.out.println that thread is running if there is no error. Then in his method called signal, I am putting flag equals to true and I am calling the method called notify. Then in the main class, I have declared my thread object and the try and catch block, I have put that sleeping for a while to simulate some work thread.sleep2000. Okay. Then I am also catching an exception which is an interrupted exception and finally I am calling my thread.signal which I have declared in my thread class. Now let me explain you what the basic overview of this code is following. Basically, in a multi-threaded applications, thread often need to communicate with each other and to coordinate their activities or share data. Java provides mechanism for thread communication such as wait, notify and notify all. These methods can be basically used to signal between threads. In this example, what basically I have done is I have created a custom thread by implementing the runnable interface and then I am overriding the run method. The thread waits for a signal using the wait method until the signal method is called, which basically sets the flag variable to true and notifies the waiting thread using the notify method. This demonstrates how thread can communicate and coordinate with each other in a multi-threaded Java application. I hope so, you would have got a clear picture of thread communication in Java. Now let's move forward and understand our last topic which is thread pooling. If I talk about thread pooling, thread pooling is a technique where fixed number of threads are created in a pool and then they are used to execute multiple tasks rather than creating a new thread for each task. This can help manage system resources and improve performance by avoiding the overhead of creating and destroying threads repeatedly. Java provides a built-in thread pooling framework called Executor Framework which allows for easy creation and management of thread pools. I hope so. You would have got a fair idea what exactly is thread pooling. Now see an example to understand more. So as you can see in this example above, we have created a thread pool with a fixed size of 5 threads using the executors.newFixThreadPool method. We then submit 10 tasks to the thread pool using the submit method which automatically assigns the task to the available threads in the pool. Finally, we shut down the thread pool with the shutdown method after all tasks are completed. So as you can see in this class, first I have created the class called myTask which basically implements the runnable interface. You can see the variable declare which is private and then the constructor here. Following, I am overriding our run method and then in the main method, I am creating a fixed size of thread pool with 5. So as you can see here, executor service, executor service equals to executors dot new fixed thread pool and I am adding 5. Then I am submitting the task to the thread pool with the for loop for int i equals to 1, i less than 10 and i plus plus. In which I am creating the object of my task which is task and I am adding i. So there are basically 10 objects created. Now if I run the program, so I am going to see the output something like this. So as you can see all over here, task 2 is running with the thread pool 2, 5, thread 5, 6 with the thread pool 5. And as you can see these are the required output of our program. I hope so, you would have got a fair idea regarding the thread pool in multi-threading. That was all for today's session. I hope so guys, you would have enjoyed our today's session, what is multi-threading in Java. Just a quick info guys, IntelliPath offers Java certification training course. Through this certification training course designed by top industry expert will help you master the Java programming language. We provide the best online training classes to help you learn OOPS concept, core and advanced Java, JDBC, objects and classes. As the part of training, you will get to work on real world industry projects. With this course, we have already helped thousands of professionals in successful career transition in IT industry. You can check the testimonial on our Achievers channel whose link is given in the description below. Without a doubt, this course can set your career to new height. So visit the course page link given in the description below and take a first step towards the career growth.